All right, guys, welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. I'm your host, J.A. Curtis, and you guys can call me Alex. And in this video, this is part five of our series called Getting Started with Git, where we learn the basics of Git so you can be pushing code up to GitHub, contribute with the open source community, and all that jazz. All right, now this video is time to actually learn about pushing code up to GitHub or to any other server for that matter. We're just going to be using GitHub for this example because it's the most common, but you can use any other service like Bitbucket, um, GitLab, or your private Git repository. The only difference will be that you just won't have maybe the same interface that I'll show you after you push it, or and you're going to be pushing to a different URL, but that's it. It's basically the same thing. So let me show you guys how to do that. All right, so it's time to push to GitHub. And in order to do this video, you're gonna need to make a GitHub account. Before we talk too much about GitHub, those of you guys that don't know what GitHub is, well, I don't know how you've been developing for so long <laughs> if you don't know what GitHub is, but the brief rundown of what GitHub is, is um, GitHub's almost like a social network for code sharing and code collaboration, okay? There's all sorts of stuff on here. GitHub as your developer with your Stack Overflow basically becomes like your identity on the internet. And GitHub is the best way to help push open source projects or projects that you have and you want to share with other people and all that kind of stuff. It's very, very handy to have and every developer needs to have one and it's free, okay? A lot of people I know have been holding out because they seem to think it costs money, but it's not, it's free. Everyone needs to have a GitHub account if you're a developer. And one of the main reasons for that is a lot of employers will require it. it whether it's freelance work you're getting or an actual um, long-term project, a lot of these um, type of people will actually request your GitHub link or your GitHub user account. And they want to take a look at the projects you've done on GitHub to basically see that you know how you're working. Yeah, so it has all sorts of other information. They can see how frequently you're you know, developing and pushing stuff to GitHub and all sorts of stuff like that. So it's really good to have a GitHub account. The other reason is you can again contribute with you know, people like me and other you know, um, people that are creating source code and things for you. You can create issues and submit and comment and all sorts of stuff um, through there because it's kind of got some social networking features, which we'll talk about in a later video. But anyway, long story short, you need a GitHub account, go get one, go make one. It is free. Now there are some paid accounts and for this video, you don't need a paid account. The difference between a paid account and a free account is that paid accounts let you have private repositories and free accounts let you have only free, like public repositories, okay? Now if you're sharing and collaborating code, then you only need the public ones. The private repositories are for your private projects that you don't want to share with the world yet. Um, maybe you want to share with a few other people, you can do that, but you don't need to share with the entire world. That's what the private repositories are for. Now I do have a private account, I think it's $7 a month. In my opinion, it's completely worth it. Some new changes to GitHub allow you to have unlimited private repositories. So for seven bucks, I can have unlimited repositories and then I can do it my, get my, my public repositories as well. So it's really, really nice and um, I just love it. GitHub's kind of my hub for development and all that kind of stuff, all right? Now, when you log in, so go ahead, make an account, just make one, it's free, and you just get the free account for this video, only pay for it if you actually need the private repositories, okay? And you might, after you start getting used to this, you're, you might wanna end up doing that. And you can see over here that like, when you get into a project, this is what a repository will look like when we get it set up. Here's our, our Laravel blog series. You can see that we've got 23 commits, you can go through, you can see all the commits. Um, there, if there's multiple branches, you have that. We'll talk about tags in a future video. You can see all the contributors, which up to this point have just been me. There's People can submit issue requests and um, pull requests as well. You can have a wiki on here. There's some like statistics about kind of how it's, you know, some basically just statistics about your actual projects and everything like that. So it's just a cool way to basically store and manage your code and collaborate with people. All right, now what we wanna do in this video is we are going to push something up to GitHub, all right? So I'm gonna assume that you have an account and I'm now gonna show you how you would then push your code up to your GitHub account so that you can then share it with people, all right? 
So go ahead, make your account, log in, and what we're gonna do now is we're going to click, come up to this plus sign and click new repository. Then go ahead and click this new repository and you're going to give it a name of getting started, or you can call it whatever you want, whatever you want your project name to be, all right? And now the URL for this is going to be Basically, it's going to be github.com slash your username slash whatever this is. Okay, so now I've got my personal account. I have our dev marketer um, organization account. So in this case, it's going to be github.com slash dev marketer slash getting started or getting started. And um, that's basically what we're going to what we're going to do. Now you can add a short description here. This is we are learning how to use git and push to GitHub. Now you can choose whether you want it to be public or private. So you can just choose here, public or private. And then I'm just gonna make this one public so you guys can see it. And then you can click create repository. Now there is a checkbox down here that a lot of people get confused by. And it says initialize this repository with a readme. And the reason I, I personally don't do this is because this basically sets up um, this causes problems basically because it kind of creates a repository on the server and then in order to make it work, you have to pull it down, work and then start work and then add files to it and then push it back up. But if you already have a project on your computer, you don't want to be doing this. Okay, so don't check this. There's very rare circumstances that you need to check this uh, box. This basically sets it up and initializes it immediately. Whereas if we leave it empty, like we're going to, it just kind of makes a placeholder for our project and allows us to push our current project up to it, okay? Instead of building the project here that we then have to pull down from the internet. Hopefully that makes sense. You're basically saying, do you want the project to start on your local computer and we're just gonna make a placeholder for you to push it up? Or do you want us to make the project up here and then you can pull it down onto your computer and start working, okay? So leave this blank. You just need to basically create a name. The description's optional. Choose public or private and then click create repository. This creates that placeholder for that repository. You can see up here, we're on github.com slash devmarketer slash getting started. And um, this is where we're now going to, and it tells you right here as well. And um, now you have a place to throw your getting started project. Now you can see down here that it tells you basically what to do. So we can push an existing repository from the command line up here, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So we already have a repository if we go to our terminal and we close this out, Is are we in our, okay, we have this project, it has three files in it, we have file.txt, we've got readme.md, and we've got second file.txt, and um, what we wanna do now is we wanna push this up to the cloud. So this is our initial repository, our existing repository, and we wanna push it up to GitHub. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to follow these two commands here, git remote add origin, and then the, the URL that this is located at, and then you wanna do git push u origin master. We'll talk about what these do in a second. Now keep in mind that your code is gonna be different and you also will not have access to type in the code that I'm typing in right now. So if you do this, you're gonna get an error, okay? So what you wanna do is you want to do it according to your, um, whatever code you're being given because yours is gonna be a little bit different. All right, so the difference here is that um, the file name is gonna exist. So for example, this URL, so this URL exists only for me. Um, it's on GitHub and Dev Marketer, which many of you guys won't have access to. And then getting started is the project and the .git is the file, obviously, all right? Now, what are we doing here? Well, we're telling it obviously to run git, and then we're giving it this command called remote add origin. Now, what remote add is, is basically saying, this is a place where we wanna be able to send um, our Git repository. And you can actually have multiple remote ads. So you could have one for your production server, one for your staging server, one where you store your source code like GitHub or something. And um, you could have like three different ones on there. And um, you could push to whichever one you want at any given time. So on your local computer, when you've got something saved up, you would just say, oh, I'm, re I'm ready to push to live. So I'm gonna say git remote or git push 
and push it to live, or you could push it to the GitHub, or you could push it to elsewhere. So you can have multiple Gits under the same project. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you add a Git remote, or um, when you do this Git remote, you're only adding the URL for the one project that you're currently in. This isn't for your whole computer, it's just for this one project that you're adding this URL to, okay? So for every project on my computer, you'll have a different URL that you'll type in, and you'll do this git remote for the first time that you submit any project to a repository, okay? So what we're doing here is just adding this remote URL, and then we added this special thing called origin on here, and origin is the name of the, um, that basically it's like the, it's the name or the, what we're gonna call this remote URL. We're calling it origin, which is kind of, that's just kind of what you call your main source file is origin. But you might have for your live production site, you might do git remote add live or add staging, or you know, git remote add staging for the staging one. That way later when you push, you can just refer to the URL by just calling it git push live, git push staging or git push origin, all right? So just keep in mind that that's what's happening here. That's what this fancy thing means. And um, as soon as you get it in here, you can click enter and you're gonna, it doesn't do anything, but it basically saves this into a config file that is stored inside of your project. So it's your local project that has this git remote um, URL now. All right, so now that it's stored in there, it's time to push it up to um, GitHub. And so to do that, that's where the second line comes in, git push and then origin master. Now what this dash u means is basically saying save, like save this as the default. All right, so then we can later just do git push and it will know to um, to just push to this one if we don't specify. Now, if we specified just push to staging, then it would push there or something like that. But with the U, it basically says this is gonna be the default for this project. Okay, so we're gonna do git push U origin master. All right, so once again, we're saying git, we're saying push the project, our current project in its current state, push it to and make it the default to the origin, which is what we just set up. Origin is the GitHub, and master is the branch, okay? And that's what we've been working on, is our master branch. We haven't talked about branches very much yet. We will in a second, but we're gonna have lots of different branches, and we're just saying push the master branch to GitHub. If you had another branch, you could say push that branch to GitHub, all right? So origin means go to GitHub, and then master means what to push. Well, we're pushing the branch, the master branch. Let's click Enter. And sure enough, it's counted everything, pushed it up, and now it's saying it's on GitHub. And here it says, it's pushed it up to GitHub. So let's come over here and we can just click refresh. And now, sure enough, we've got our project on here. So we have all of our projects here. So you can see we have our gitignore, we have our readme, we have our second file.txt, and then we've got the readme. It automatically kind of loads the readme that we had set up. So it's got our readme on here. So. Um, we've now pushed up to GitHub. We can now take this URL, since it's public, I could copy this URL and share it with anyone that wants to see it, and they could sit here and look at it. They could also look at all these individual files. They could look at this second file.txt. Um, they could read your gitignore file. Um, whatever files you had in here, they could see. Now, just to give you an example of what you know a bigger project might look like, if I come over here, Okay, so if I come over to this project, you can see there's a lot more files, and this is why it's handy for you to submit this to me over just trying to copy and paste code in email, is because look, I can see your whole project in here. I can dive into all of your folders and read the code exactly, all right? So this is why it's so handy to have this on, um, on GitHub, okay? This is why GitHub is so handy. Another reason that it's so handy is because I can actually see, you can see all the versions of this. So for example, let's click this readme.md and you can come over here and you can see history and we can see there were two versions of this in our git history. So this is where we added the original file. You can say there was nothing beforehand and then we added these two files. And then here we added a second file. Oh, this is on, sorry. This commit had on the readme, we added these three lines and on the, we also added the second file.txt where we added this one line, all right? If we come back and we look at what happened here, you can see that we basically um, edited this line and added, oops, um, these lines here. So we added that horizontal rule, we added that email me. It tells you exactly what I did each and every single time. You could comment and do stuff like that. 
So this is why it gets so handy to use GitHub. Hopefully that's obvious um, by watching this, that you can see the usefulness of GitHub and why you would want to store it up there. All right, so get used to basically creating projects on GitHub, storing them up there, get used to using GitHub. It is a developer's best friend. And now with the basic knowledge that you have, you know how to basically create a project locally on your computer, commit it um, through Git, and now push it to GitHub. Now, every time we want to make a change, we can just push it again to GitHub. So let me just show you that workflow real quick. Let's say we want to make a new change. We're going to open up, um, let's open up our project real quick. Let's make a change to our readme.md um, here. We're just gonna say this, all right. So we just added another line on here, just for simplicity. I'm gonna go ahead and save that project. And now come over here, you can see in our git status that we have this file, our readme has been modified. So let's go ahead and add it in there. And then we're gonna commit, all right. Let's commit that change. Because right now it's in staging, so we're committing it. And we said added third, section to read me all right and now it's committed on our computer but it's not on the server yet you'll see if we refresh here it looks exactly the same because we have a commit on our computer but it's not pushed to github so let's push it to github since everything's already been set up we already have everything logged in i can actually just do git push or git push origin master to specify but because our defaults were set up if i just do git push it will automatically push the origin master. All right, so let me get, do git push. You can see it pushed it up. And now if I refresh, you can see that this third line is now on here, okay? So that is how you would add, and you can see also here that the most recent thing changed. So added third section to readme is now on there and you can see what I pushed. You can see the changes that I made, all right? So that's how you would basically push stuff is whenever you make a commit, you can just do git push or git push origin master to push it back up to GitHub so the changes are reflected on GitHub. And you don't have to do it every time you do a commit. If you're doing two or three commits today, you could just do all two, three of them, have three of them on your computer and then push all three of them up at once. It would be exactly the same. You would just do git commit, you would make your commit, keep working, do another commit, do another commit. And then when you're ready, you get do git push and it will change. it'll just add whatever um, was added, it'll just push up to the server whatever's added since your last um, push, okay? So it's pretty easy to do. Now in the next videos, we're gonna go into some more advanced Git, um, or at least intermediate Git. Um, we're gonna go into some more advanced, our intermediate Git, and also talk a little more about GitHub and how you can do issues, issues and pull requests and wikis and stuff like that, just to give you a little more bait, you know, information to run on about GitHub and you can become a little more knowledgeable there, but you have all the basics you need to get started. You know how to track your soft, you know how to track your Git repositories, you know how to push them up to GitHub and all that kind of stuff. So now you're able to do that. So if you're ever sending me an email for any project on there and you want me to look at your code, this is what I want you to do. I want you to, have it all put into Git. I want you to push it up to GitHub and send me the GitHub URL in the email instead of actually copying and pasting your code into my email, okay? So anyway, thanks so much you guys for watching and for um, staying tuned. If you are just joining this channel, I'd really love it if you subscribed below, drop a like, anything like that is really, really handy. Um, we learn a ton of different things from Laravel, JavaScript, Ruby on Rails, all that kind of stuff. Um, we're an awesome community where we're looking at not only building applications, but learning to grow them into whole businesses and stuff like that as well. So thanks so much for staying tuned, guys. I'm going to see you guys in the next video.